is not just a campaign. This is a movement. It's the greatest political movement in the history of our country. It's the greatest. And when we win next November, it will be an epic political earthquake, the likes of which the world has never seen before. I want to thank Club 47 President Larry Snowden. What a great job. As well as Treasurer uh, where Sue? Did she leave? She's right over here. Sue. Sue. Thank you, Sue. Sue Snowden, Vice President, Linda Stock, Congressman. Oh, wait a minute. We have a big celebrity here tonight. We, and I'll tell you something. He's great, and he loves this state. Congressman Matt Gates. Where the hell is Matt Gates? Where is he? Hello, Matt. I said, all right, very good. Plus, they get $6 billion. That's not a good deal, is it? And it's used for exactly what you're watching right now on television and reading in the papers. Under my leadership, Iran was weak and broke. And disastrous Iran nuclear deal and imposed the toughest ever sanction. I like to use the same for, so I took it off Crook and Hillary. That was one of the, respected them. They had different viewpoints, that's certainly true. But they were, afraid of America. Today they laugh at our country. They laugh with crooked Joe Biden. You have chaos, bloodshed, war, terror, and death. Look what's happening today. Because the occupant of the White House is a laughing stock. We'll do a couple of rallies for you. We did. We had unbelievable crowds turn out. They said, you're going to win. He said, I don't think so. And he won. He won. Then four years later, they said, will you run against the president, he said, I have no comment. I said, no comment. You know what, you know what that means, Sue and Larry? That means yes. So we hit him very hard. People said, please don't hit him, sir. He's a Republican. I said, I don't care if he's a Republican. We're going to hit him. And he, uh, he didn't have a lot of political skill, to put it mildly. And now he's uh, falling, like I said the other day, falling like a very badly injured bird from the sky. And in one state, he's actually in fifth place. He's in fifth place. This has not been a good situation. I think he blew it for in four years. You never know what's going to happen. But in 28, I don't see it happening. I don't see it. But I can never forget because that's great disloyalty. I have others that were disloyal. Most are great. But uh, we have some other people. One happens to be a governor of another state, not too far away. And, uh, you know, you get these guys elected, and then they say, I'll run against them. And we don't like that. I don't think the room here likes that, do they? Huh? I don't think so. But he started off hot. He was losing by a lot. And, you know, we got more votes by 1.2 million votes than he did. I don't know. Nobody ever talks about that. We got, in fact, Gina, you mentioned it to me. We got 1.2 million more votes than Ron DeSanctimonious in the state of Florida. And nobody ever says that. The press, the fake news, that's a lot of fake news back there. But they never say that. The only way they'll do it is if I say it. You might as well say it yourself because they're never going to say it. Next November, we're going to win the White House. It's going to be one of the greatest triumphs in the history of politics. Making America great again will begin with making America strong again and making America safe again. That's Under right. my leadership, the world was peaceful and calm because... America was respected. The president was respected. I dealt with the strongest people in the world. They were smart. They were streetwise. They respected me. I respected them. They had different viewpoints. That's certainly true. But they were afraid of America. Today, they laugh at our country. They laugh. With crooked Joe Biden, you have chaos, bloodshed, war, terror, and death. Look what's happening today. Because the occupant of the White House is a laughing stock. All over the world, America's enemies cannot believe how lucky they got. They got real lucky. Every monster, villain, dictator, and terrorist, and there are plenty of them. I know most of them. I got to know a lot of them. All over the planet, they're having a field day because they know they will never have it better than they do with Crooked Joe, who in many cases received money from those countries. I wonder what that's all about. Do you remember during the debate with Chris Wallace, how's he's doing? He's not doing too well. 
I said, I want to ask him a question. What is it? How come he received three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? He got three and a half million dollars. And he's going, uh, 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 uh. But Chris Wallace saved him. You shouldn't ask that question. That has nothing to do with anything. Well, about two months ago, it became the biggest subject. It turns to be that now. And I will tell you that Jamie Comer and Jim Jordan and the group, they're doing a very good job. They found out things that nobody can believe. And, and Matt Gates too, by the way, with Matt. Matt is in there. He's strong and tough, smart. Three years ago, you went from the, I shouldn't be saying this, you know, but what the hell. You went from the strongest president this country has had to the weakest president you've ever had. But soon you will go from the weakest president you've ever had back strongest president you've ever had. We have, uh, we have so many problems. We have so many problems in our country. You remember during the debate, I don't call her Crooked Hillary anymore. I use that now. I never like to use the same for So I took it off Crooked Hillary. That was one of the best days in her life. I understand they celebrate it. We now call her Beautiful Hillary. She's a beautiful woman. And we used the crooked word for Joe Biden, Crooked Joe. We took Sleepy off because... I think he's sleepy. He's definitely sleepy, but he's more crooked than he is sleepy. But Hillary Clinton said that she accused me during the debate with his personality. He's going to start a war. And yet it turned out to be just the opposite. With my personality, there were no wars. You wouldn't have had Ukraine. You wouldn't have had any of them. In fact, it's the first time in 70 years and on top of everything else, we beat 100% of the ISIS caliphate. We beat them down. Just remember how much safer the world was under the Trump administration after so many years of beheadings, bedlam, slaughter. In the Middle East, we completely obliterated the ISIS territorial caliphate, and we did it in a matter of weeks. We did it very quickly. You know, we have a great military. They're trying to turn it woke. It's not going to happen. But we have a great, I'm not talking about the television generals that don't know what they're doing. I'm talking about the real generals in our military. We wipe them out. We wipe them out in a short period of time. Everyone said it was going to take three years. I said, really? I don't think so. I flew to Iraq and I met the generals that were in charge that I put in charge. And they said, sir, I think we can do it in about four weeks. I said, really? Everyone else is saying three years and maybe we can't do it. Sir. We'll have time left over, four weeks, sir. And they did it. They knocked the hell out of him. We killed the founder of the ISIS movement, al-Baghdadi. Remember al-Baghdadi, the biggest of them all? And then we terminated the world's top terrorist, the Iranian butcher, Soleimani. You remember that, the Iranian butcher? He is the one that they call him the father of the roadside bomb. When you see a soldier walking around, a person walking around with no legs, no arms, or a face that's been absolutely obliterated, it was Soleimani that did it. He was responsible for about 94% of the bombs that were made in Iran. I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal and imposed the toughest ever sanctions on the murderous Iranian regime. They never had it so bad. We decimated their finance and choked off the money to pay to the terrorist thugs. And look what happened now. I was also proud to be the best friend Israel has ever had in the White House by far. And if the election wasn't rigged, there would be nobody even thinking about going into Israel. The election was rigged, very sadly rigged. But we'll swamp them the next time and it'll be bigger than anybody has ever seen. Just as I promised, I recognized the eternal capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem and got the building built for slightly less than they thought. It was going to cost $2 billion. We got it done for 500000 I would say that's good. I said, do we have any used buildings around? Yes, we had a better location. They were going to pay a fortune for a crummy location in Jerusalem, not a good location. And I said, what do we have? We have a building in a great location, sir. We don't have to pay $300 million for the land. We have it. And there's a building on it, an old building, but structurally sound. I said, let me see. And 
We worked it out. They came back, sir, I think we can do it for $400,000. I said, man, does that sound cheap. It actually sounds... First time I've ever done this. I said, let's do it for 500000 Remember, they're going to spend two... Two billion dollars on building a building so crazy. I got it built in four months, and we have an embassy that, frankly, if they spent two billion, it wouldn't be nicer. All Jerusalem stone. A friend of mine is in an office building in New York. All he talks about is Jerusalem stone. I have Jerusalem stone all over my office. And so when I heard we're building in Jerusalem, I asked our people, so can you get Jerusalem stone, and is it expensive? And they said, it's not expensive, it's Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem stone. We did the whole damn building in Jerusalem Stone, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful building. So we got it built, but I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. They were working on that for 58 years. 58. And with the historic Abraham Accords, we even had peace in the Middle East. We were peace. We had peace. And I fought for Israel like no president in history, but then crooked Joe Biden came along and tossed Israel to the bloodthirsty jihadists. That's what happened. He gave them, no, he wouldn't even call up the prime minister, they called him. It's a very sad thing when you look at what happened. What a difference a president makes. Isn't it incredible? Just a president. What a difference. The savage attacks on Israel happened for three reasons. Biden loosened my tough sanctions on Iran and allowed them to sell massive amounts of oil, making them $80 billion a year. Congratulations. They were making nothing with us. They were going to make a deal. We would have had a deal within one week after the election. They were desperate. They wanted to make a deal. The U.S. then gave Iran just a few weeks ago $6 billion as ransom money. You know that, right? Five people. Good deal. This is the way we deal. They get five hostages. We get five hostages. I said, all right. Very good. Plus, they get $6 billion. That's not a good deal, is it? And it's used for exactly what you're watching right now on television and reading in the papers. Under my leadership, Iran was weak and broke and desperate for love. They wanted love. They were weak and they were broke. And now they're rich as hell. They got hundreds of billions of dollars. And you have a whole new country and they're probably 90 days away from having a nuclear weapon. And we have a man who's grossly incompetent, who can't put two sentences together. And he's the one that's leading our nation in talks. In fact, until just a little while ago, he was getting absolutely decimated. He never even mentioned the word Iran in any of his talks. He didn't want to talk about it. But nobody under me was allowed to buy oil. I told China, they were the biggest purchaser of oil in Iran. I said, if you buy oil, any oil from Iran, we're never doing business. You have all the stuff that you take out of this country and rip us off. We're not going to do any more business with China. They stopped immediately. No more oil. I said it to India. I said it to many different countries. And they went way down, way, way down. And they had no money. And they wanted to talk, and they wouldn't have done anything. Just like Russia wouldn't have done anything for two reasons. I said, Putin, you're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I got along with him very good. You know, I actually got along with the tough guys the best. The weak people I didn't get along with. It's sort of a weird, sort of a weird deal. But I got along with them very well, actually. But I said, you can't do it, Vladimir. You can't do it. It was the apple of his eye. But he never did, and he wouldn't have done it. I said, don't do it. But you know what happened uh, when... Oil went to $100 a barrel, and, for, and by the way, it's right there right now. Think of it. Biden wants to stop the war with Ukraine, and yet he's created a...